Hi everybody, it's Andrea, welcome back to the channel. I am going to do my reading wrap up for April. Um, so it's a bit late, but life's been going on. I've, I've lost my vlogging camera. Um, Jennifer was a bit under the weather and I've been a bit under the weather, so I haven't been doing much filming. Well, I'm back now to let you know. I can, no. So in the month of April, I read, how many did I read? I'll just go back to it, hang on. 26 books. Some of them are a bit short, some of those are cosy mysteries and some are physical books and so on. So, quick updates on my reading challenge. So in April I uh, upped my reading challenge from 75 books to 150. Today, which is May 8th, I'm filming this, so Saturday May 8th, you'll be seeing this probably on the 9th, the 8th, the 9th or the 10th, something like that. I am on 80 out of 150 books, so if I carry on at speed I'm reading, I'll be up in it again. But I know that towards the middle of the, the, the year, the weather gets nice, and I'm out and about with Jennifer and Paul, and so my reading level, it goes like this, and then it, like this, and then it'll level off, and then it'll curve downwards through the summer, and then go back up uh, towards the end of the year. Well, that was boring, wasn't it? Let's get on with it. <laughs> what did we read? Okay, so we read a few more uh, Agatha Frost ones. Um, so we're finishing off the Peridot Cafe series books 11 to 20 in this one. There are more, but I've just read 11, uh, 1 to 20. So the first one was Cupcakes and Casualties. So a famous actress named Candice Bennett moved to the village. She buys um, Barker's old cottage which was destroyed in a storm, demolishes it and wants to build her dream house which is totally not in keeping with the rest of the location. However the foreman of the um, construction is uh, murdered and Julia and Barker are trying to solve the crime so there's a couple of murders in this that one and I think the florist yeah the florist is killed as well because she knows who killed the foreman. So yeah, there's a lot going on in that. Um, interesting enough, Candice Bennett is staying up with her father and her stepmother because they were friends in modelling school. <laughs> there you go. So the second book I read is a physical book and that was Jack the Ripper, 100 Years of Mystery by Peter Underwood. This was such an easy read. Now I find some Jack the Ripper books can be quite difficult, but this was so easy to read. Um, I'm not sure whether he, I can't even, I mean, to be honest, they did come to sort of some conclusion with the best suspects and who they definitely thought it was and who it possibly could be. Um, but yeah, it was really, really easy to read. Peter Underwood is a very, very good writer. I would recommend this one for an overview because it was very, very easy to read. It was not difficult at all. I, I read it in a couple of days. Um, it's a nice looking book. Um... I mean, I've read Peter Underwood before and I do want some more of his books uh, because he has written a book I have got which is this blue one here, I don't know if you can see it, I'm pointing to it, it's that one there, it's called This Haunted Isle and it's about ghosts in uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, I've had that years I did, and I, was only, I thought I know this name and I went and checked and, and there was, and I want to read some more of his ghost books because they're really good so I'm, I like those sorts of books, books about ghost stories. So I might do a video about ghost stories uh, books as well because they're always interesting aren't they? <laughs> so yeah, uh, Jack the Ripper by Peter Underwood, definitely recommend it, it's a really really good read. Um, after that one, I read back to my notebook to find out what it was, uh, back to Agatha Frost, Blueberry Muffins and Misfortune. Um, Barker has written his book and it's about to be released, he's having a launch in the library at Perrydale, however during the, uh, during the launch there is an incident in which a dead body falls through the ceiling. And it's been there around 10 years. So, <clears throat> do excuse me. They find out who the body is and they set out to figure it out. Um, they do try to, the, the killer does try to pin it on Julia's brother in law. Doesn't work because Julia's too clever for that sort of nonsense. So, there's all sorts of stuff going on. It's the usual cozy mystery, it's an easy read. Next one is called Ice Cream and Incidents. This was my favourite of the series so far. Basically what happens is Dot wins a week in Blackpool in a raffle but she doesn't want to go. She wants to stay at home to do something else. 
So she gives it to Barker and Julia and who else? Uh, Jessie and Alfie, so her adopted daughter to be and her brother Alfie. And they go to Blackpool to stay at a B and B called Sparkles by the Sea. Battery's going. I'll be back. So yeah, they're staying at Sparkles by the Sea. Now this is a B and B run by a guy named Russell who is a drag queen and the BB B &B &B is a, uh, an entertainment and b, b that showcases drag artists uh, so there's new new drag queens and old ones but one of the drag queens is severely injured, injured when the lighting rig falls on her so they don't know who caused the the rigging to fall it was tampered with it wasn't installed incorrectly this drag queen is one that people don't particularly like because they want to be the star of the show they decide to start singing themselves but they're not a very good singer they're a brilliant lip syncer and dancer but they want to sing on their own julia barker and the others want to find out who tried to kill this drag queen the, the drag queen does survive which is good um obviously <laughs> and um they need to find it out otherwise Russell will have to sell the business and he doesn't want to because it is a place that showcases new and old talent it's a home for them um, and in, in all it sounds like an absolutely fabulous place that I would love to stay at and I wish it was real um, of course they do solve it they find out who it was they save the business and so on and so on which is great which you know but I would totally stay there <clears throat> Okay, champagne and catastrophe. Can't even say it, catastrophes. An old friend of Julia's moves back to the village, and Julia discovers that Leah, her friend, has crossed practically everybody there except for herself. <clears throat> Leah disappears, and Julia needs to find out who has taken her before she turns up dead. But to do that, she's got to get to the bottom of everybody's dislike for her so that means investigating everybody that she holds dear so this was a really good one Leah is a wedding planner who wants to help plan uh, Julia's wedding to Barker and then next one on the series is wedding cake and woes so it's the day of Julia's wedding and everything goes wrong um, Oh, all sorts of things. She uh, ruins her dress, the flowers are wrong, it's raining and something happens to Barker. Uh, but that is the least of their worries because when they are there getting married, the choir is singing and the lead choir singer dies. She is murdered. So the wedding is postponed until everybody has been, you know, basically is cancelled. They go on and have a party because they've paid for the reception. So Julia sets out to find out who uh, killed the choir leader uh, but, and then they get married at the end at uh, Christmas, which is really nice. So nothing can ever go right for that poor girl, I tell you. It's always something. And then next is Red Velvet and Revenge. So Julia has been asked to be co-judge of the Peridale Bake Off with a local DJ named Tony Bridges. But Tony Bridges isn't very nice. Everybody loves him because he comes across so well on air. But he's a really nasty piece of work. Really nasty piece and nobody likes him except for his wife. So he has a peanut allergy and he takes a, a mouthful of cake from his ex-wife um, and it's somebody has doused it in peanut oil and somebody has also hidden his EpiPen. So he dies of anaphylactic shock. Um, so it's up to Julia to try and find out who it was that actually killed him because obviously his ex-wife could go to jail because it was on her cake even though it's not her. Mm -hmm. Eight, Vegetables and Vengeance. So Julia, for two reasons, she is, is training for the marathon, the Peridale Marathon. This is the only town I know that has one, um, other than London. I'm sure there are others. We have half marathons. Um, because she wants to lose weight and then she should treat, increase her chances of falling pregnant, which is fair enough. Um, but however during this train session local farmer who owns the farm up behind her cottage Ted Coleman is stabbed in the back he is literally murdered so she goes up there his family aren't very nice he's on his second wife who is friends with his first wife his second wife has fallen out with her father because he didn't want her to marry Ted which is understandable he has three sons from his first marriage and a daughter with his second wife it's getting complicated but who killed him? So obviously everybody's blaming the second wife. 
So she goes to stay with Julia for a bit while they investigate. But it's not who you think it's going to be. Because all the boys are pretty nasty, except for the youngest one's quite nice. But the others are quite self-centred and one's really horrible. Nine, cheesecake and confusion. We are near the end. Julia's babysitting her young brother, half-brother half Vincent, because his mother has gone on a girl's holiday and had an accident broken her leg. So her father's got to go over to bring back his wife. However, while they're away and she's looking after Vinny, the house is broken into. Perrydale Manor is broken into and everything of value is taken. It's an inside job. It must be. Somebody knows what to take and where it is. Julia is held at gunpoint and it's around this point she finds out she's pregnant. That's terrifying enough as it is, obviously, because you think you're going to die and you just find out you're having a baby. However, what they don't know is that Julia's father and wife are in financial difficulties. Um, since uh, there's no money to keep her father in the hospital that he was in, the private hospital, there's no insurance because they can't afford to pay it but she doesn't know um, and of course when the burglary happens there's no insurance so they can't claim it and they're going to lose the house and everything. Julia goes out to solve the crime, which she does, um, and it's a little bit twisted but everything works out in the end. Cocktails and cowardice. I've missed one somewhere. <gasps> no, yeah, brownies and bloodshed is first. Sorry, I missed that one. Dot, Julia's grandmother, is marrying Percy. And they're having a whole Wizard of Oz themed wedding, which is a great idea, but like, Dot is like uh, 90, 80 or something and she's Dorothy. But they dress Julia up as the Wicked Witch, which I think is a bit odd. However, the night before, they're having a meal with all of uh, Percy's family. They've come to visit, except for one person. I think it's his brother or uncle? Brother? Older and reviled is the word to use. Brother. And um, so they're having a meal in a restaurant and we meet his brother and their partners. Or not. Because there's two brothers that turn up. One's married. The other one's not, but his sister's with It's so confusing. The relations life <laughs> apart from the murders i wouldn't want to go there um yeah but this other brother does turn up now two one of the brothers and his partner do turn up in another series which is the claire's candles which we'll talk about in a bit because we read those as well it's a lot of books so uh yeah so they're having a meal out at the only restaurant in town when his older brother turns up and causes trouble at the wedding everything's going fine it's beautiful and fun everybody's dressed up having a laugh and then at the end they want to do this stunt with Julia being the wicked witch going uh, going down in a trap door and dry ice and all this that doesn't get to happen because Percy's brother is uh, found head first dead in the dry ice not a nice way to go <laughs> dry ice is absolutely horrifically cold Percy is a suspect, as are the other brothers, but who killed him? We will find out. And the last one, I think in the series, I believe, yeah, is Cocktails and Cowardice, although there are more, I just haven't got to them. So Julie Barker, Dot and Percy go to Spain on a delayed honeymoon. The hotel is owned by a woman named Minnie Harlow, a formal a former actress and model who is like a relative to Dot and Julia. Dot and Percy are kidnapped and held for ransom because somebody in town is trying to buy up the whole of the town and flood it with like fake designer goods and crappy holidays, whereas it used to be a lovely place. So they're being held hostage and Julia is, is showing now and she's very pregnant and they don't want... Barker doesn't want her investigating, but of course she does because it is her grandmother. And I mean, a dot's not completely useless and helpless. She, they do uh, try and escape, but they don't actually get away with it. They get caught and taken back. Uh, one of the kidnappers, I think it's his son or his nephew, is a, a young man who's scared and is doing what he has to do, what he's told to do. But in the end, he's the one that helps them get away. It's all this very fast paced and very enjoyable. And the truth comes out on, on what happens and the, the 
Minnie had been burying her head in the sand when it came to the hotel since her husband had died um, and so she decided she decided at the end that she's going to learn how it runs properly with her daughter and they're going to get it up and running and at least try it trying it with go even though she's signed the contract over to another person the hotel this but this is the person that was kidnapping people to get them to you know kidnapping tourists to get them to sell their properties so it would be signed under duress technically so it wouldn't stand up so that's it uh, the next book I read was the Stephen King book of the month Elevation so this was a weird one this was a very very weird one um, yeah so basically Scott Carey is a man who weighs at the start of the book or just before the start of the book starts around 200 pounds he's overweight but every day he's losing weight he only tells his doctor a retired doctor who's a friend um but he doesn't look any different so he still looks like 200 pounds but he's losing weight a new couple called deirdre or deirdre and missy um move into town they are obviously married and they have a fine dining experience i believe it's vegetarian and vegan food which is not a problem um but they keep they've got dogs and they keep letting them foul on uh, Scott's lawn and he's not happy so they do fall out over it and the girls run their dogs elsewhere but in the end they do start to come friends because uh, they have a 12k run and they forge a friendship because he st starts to realize the prejudices that as two fe uh, uh, all female couple uh, are getting in a small town and they don't deserve it because they're really great people and he wants their business to su succeed as well so they forge a friendship um and they help him through his affliction uh, they don't cure it and i'm not going to tell you what happens but it's such a freaky end it's weird ending uh, you know but that's you know you would have thought oh they, you know well they find a cure and then you get to the end it's like okay that was odd what, what happens next <laughs> um it's one of those endings but i actually quite like that ending Okay, oh, next one is Jack the Ripper, A Psychic Investigation by Pamela Ball. Psychic Investigation, need I say more? Yeah, this wasn't easy to read. And while I want to believe in the paranormal and, and, and psychics and stuff, I find it very hard to say what well, they definitely contacted these people, you know, and they came to a, 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 they don't even come to a conclusion. So yeah, less said about that one, the better. Now we're on to Claire's candles. So we met Claire last month. Another ebook. As always, I'll put them up here. Oh no, first of all, before we get there, we've got Marilyn Monroe by Paul Donnelly. Again, that's not a very good book. There are an essay, there is an essay on each um, film, which is interesting. There's some little facts. So they've got, what have they got? So for instance, some like it hot, uh, behind the scenes, about her being pregnant. Did you know she could not sit down between takes because of her costumes? Barbette, a uh, female impersonator, was brought into work with Curtis and Lemon, but he didn't get on with uh, Jack Lemon. The working title was Not Tonight, Josephine. And, and so on. Um, and then you get things like what the critics say and a verdict. Uh, that's fine and then at the end there's a list of interesting people that she knew however let me just see yeah it does he lists the best and worst films that he had um after he asked people um and on her death he's got the theories it does have all the, the theories on it which is it is good um but it's just ugh you just ugh no not necessary not a necessary book at all there are better smaller books on Marilyn not smaller but you know under these sort of guises of the pocket books type things where really, you know give a brief overview there are better ones I've lost my notebook now here it is sorry that's on the floor we'll get there and then uh well, next month is always look, already looking up to be in uh, an interesting month okay black cherry betrayal uh, agatha frost this is claire's candle she's setting up her business when claire gets the keys to the shop she's finding on the way to opening her dream business until they discover the previous 
tenant dead in the attic. So how did she get there and who killed her? There's a lot of, antip uh, antip There's a lot of objections about Claire turning what was a very loved tea room into a candle shop, but they do come round in the end. The next one on that one was coconut milk casualty. So these are the flavours or the scents that she makes her candles in. So black cherry flavour. And this was the person who died's favourite candle that Claire made because she did know her. Coconut milk casualty. The night before Claire opens her shop, her window is vandalised. Um, and then the next day, her Uncle Pat's lodger. Now Uncle Pat's in jail because he killed two people in the first book. Uh, is found dead. Uh, did Pat have anything to do with the murder? Did he have anything to do with the graffiti? And, and why has he been writing to Claire? Claire finds a stack of letters from him in her father's shed, um, decides to find out what's going on. Then she goes to visit him in prison. She decides she needs to, to talk to him and she's not sure whether she wants to carry on. But as somebody says to her, he's still your Uncle Pat. Yes, he killed two people, but the truth is he's unlikely to do it again, even though he's going to be in, well, he's going to be in prison for the rest of his life. But the what the reasons that they were killed was because of uh, oh, it's a long story read the book but uh yeah so it, it it's very interesting that pat was running a, he had his own mini las vegas in the basement um and it's all to do with that and gambling really but not him he's fine he didn't do this one um um friday night bites by erin johnson so that must have been the only three in the book, those two. So, uh, yeah, I read one of these before, Erin uh, Johnson. I was looking at think, what the hell is that? Um, and this is a story about Jolene. Jolene lives in the dark market. So this is a whole area. It's an island that is filled with magical people. So witches and, and so on and shapeshifters and, and vampires and all sorts live there. Um, Jolene is a shifter she's an owl shifter but shifters are reviled um due to something that happened 50 or 60 years ago um and they are not allowed decent jobs or housing or assistance education so jolene managed to keep her shifter side a secret for many years became a lawyer and worked her way up she was about to be named partner when um one of her co-workers eve i think it was eve throws a potion over her and the potion takes away her, sh her magic and shifting abilities. However, she's in the middle of shifting at the time because she thinks she might be able to get away. So it comes out she's a shifter, so she's fired from her job, she loses her fiance and she ends up living back in the dark market area, which is the slums basically. The slums are run by a gangster named Ludolf Catavol, who hates shifters too, even though he is one. So in Friday Night Bites, Jolene um, who can talk to, to animals and finds that a sweatshop owner in this book a sweatshop owner and a fashion designer are murdered now she has a, 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 a agreement that she works with the police and a, a police dog named Daisy so the police dog can smell lies Daisy doesn't like her because she knows she's a shifter but Peter the policeman who's got a crush on Jolene and vice versa doesn't know she hasn't told him so the sweatshop over is a witch and her familiar is a giant spider who's about to die so Jolene goes to talk to him and the spider just says uh was here before once as a, a once a girl once a woman which is a confusing thing but she finds figures it out in the end and then she's killed by spider venom but not a spider bite so <laughs> They try to make it look like she was built by a bit by her familiar, but she wasn't. The next day, a fashion designer is killed on the runway of her fashion show. The sweatshop owner has been making knockoffs um, because the designs were leaked. Now, at first, the fashion designer was worried that this would hurt business, but it actually increased the business that they were getting and made their product more valuable. So she's got to find out who killed them both so she does this partly by going undercover at the sweatshop and talking to the various animals which is really cool my mum's read all these as well it's really weird uh, and then the next one is game of bones so that's not a play on game of thrones is it um what happens jolene 
Peter and Daisy are, oh, excuse me, they're at the police officer's ball, costume ball, wearing masks, because Joan didn't want to go because she thought somebody from her previous life might recognise her, and they are there, and they do, because she has to take her mask off. Um, where the officer of the year is murdered, but the officer of the year isn't all he has seemed. He's got a secret in his past. Um, so can Jolene, Peter and Daisy unearth his secret and find out why he was killed? Peter doesn't like this officer of the year, by the way. And you'll find out why. And the next one in is Pig Little Lies. Uh, the head of a pyramid scheme that her friend, that Jolene's friend Heidi wants to invest in is murdered on stage at the annual conference. And what's the end of her own potions, by the way? Uh, a very huge suspect pool and plenty of motive. Um, can they find out who the murderer is? So basically the potions are being manufactured as um, elixirs to make you look younger, make you thinner, make your hair a different colour, make your eyes brighter and so on. And she drinks one on stage just to show they're safe but it kills her. So Jolene uh, and Peter are there and no, Jolene and Heidi are there with Will, her friend who's also a shifter. Heidi's not. And they are Heidi and Heidi wants, has invested in this pyramid scheme but Will and Jolene is totally against it. Will gets caught up in it and ends up investing but of course it all falls apart. It's not good. Can they find out who killed this person? Was it her husband? Was it her sister? Was it one of the disgruntled people outside that have lost all their money to this scheme? You'll have to read it to find out. Um, if you wonder why it's called Pig Little Lies, uh, the animal in the question is a pig that uh, she keeps on stage with her. I don't want to ask. Uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, someone Jolene grew up with is murdered on her wedding day. Uh, she is a shifter. Um, her husband's a wealthy politician. They'd got married before she died, um, running for office. As the attitudes are against Sifter, there's plenty of suspects, including his ex-girlfriend, his mother and father, and so on. His big spiel is that he's for Shifter rights. Um, she has an allergy to strawberries, and it's strawberries that killed her, but nobody can find out how they got into her system. There are strawberries in her room, but did she eat them and kill herself? No. She was poisoned with them, but they have to find out why. And she couldn't save herself because her medicine was stolen. So she had an oral medicine spray and a, an EpiPen type thing. And both of them have been stolen before she could take, you know, so when she goes to take them, they're gone. There you go. We're near the end. Hooray! Right. First book in the Terry Pratchett read reread The Colour of Magic. So we know what this is about. I'm not going to go into too much detail about it. I love Terry Pratchett. Um, one of the things I do love in this reprint, I don't know when this was reprinted, October 89, is his first line. If I had a penny for every time someone asked me where I got the idea of Discworld, I'd have, hang on a moment, £4.67. Anyway, the answer is that it was lying around and it didn't look as though it belonged to anyone. <laughs> yeah. So, and it, it also goes on to say, since this is a reprint by Popper's Mind, gosh, of the first book in a series that will eventually contain at least 10 books. It's like, there's nearly 40 books in your series, if not that amount. It's the huge. With this being the first and The Shepherd's Crown being the last. And then there's short stories as well. Basically, it tells the story of the tourist, Two Flower, who comes to Ankhmore Pork from his hometown, his home country, because he wants to have a look around. It's the first tourist on the disc. He meets up with uh, the useless wizard, Rincewind, and Rincewind um, offers to show him around, and they get into all sorts of trouble. Go read it. If you haven't, go read it. It's not the easiest of the Discworld books and you'd probably be better off starting with something like Weird Sisters or Guards Guards, which is one of the later books, just because by this point he's got into his stride with it and he's developing his characters more firmly. But I do have a soft spot for this. And for me, Terry Pratchett's are comfort books. I read them when I'm feeling low and down and miserable on days like today when it's horrible, it's raining, it's gross out because... There's just something comforting about curling up in bed with a Discworld novel, either on audiobook, on Audible I've got some of them, or in the physical format like this. 
This is a long video and we haven't finished yet. Next. Oh, God, I've lost the page. We are near the end, actually. There's not many more to go now. Oh, another physical one. Jodie Taylor. Another time, another place. Book. Well, it doesn't say. I think it's 13. No, 12. Book 12. It does on the back. <laughs> of the Chronicles of St Mary's. I'll just read you what it says on the back. It's time max, and so a whole new chapter opens up. It's long been known that if a thing can go wrong, it will, with knobs on usually. Disasters start to pile up. A new colleague with no respect for the past and great deal to prove. Historians lost in time, and worst of all, Rosie Lee on her very first jump. Then there's the small matter of Max's dishonourable discharge. From Tudor England to the Tower of Babel is all going ho horribly wrong. Jobless and homeless, Max receives an offer she can't refuse. Another time, another place. Another, a refuge perhaps. But she's got that wrong too. So yeah, it's all going here. As usual, you've got the dramatis personae, or the dramatis thingami as Jodie calls them, which is a bit um, misleading in this one, just simply because there are people mentioned that aren't in it and people that aren't mentioned are in it. So that's interesting. And as she says, most of this book was written during the COVID-19 lockdown. And I should make it very clear that Max's views on the hard-heartedness of the nursing profession are hers and hers alone. And she says, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone in the NHS for their selfless dedication and determination. Hear, hear to that, I say. And I'm pretty sure that Mark, whatever Markham says, nurses don't actually throw people out of windows in the pursuance of their duties. One of the things I like is what it says about Jodie Taylor, which is very much a, a very comedic thing in the vein of Terry Pratchett. Um, it says, born in Bristol, now living in Gloucester, facts which both cities vigorously deny. <laughs> I love that. And then nearly 20 books later, she still has no idea what to do, what she wants to do when she grows up. I think we're all the same, Jodie. Yeah. They investigate major historical events in contemporary time. Do not call it time travel. If you haven't read The Chronicles of St Mary, I strongly recommend that you pick these books up either on Audible, written by, uh, read by the lovely Zara Ram, or on physical or Kindle. I actually had the very first one, just one damn thing after another, on my Kindle for two or three years before I, I found, found it on Amazon again. thought, oh, that sounds interesting, and ordered the paperback. I now have all the paperbacks and the first uh, one in a hardback, but they've only done the first one, sadly. I wish they'd do more of them. Um, uh, two more, three more to go. Yay, we did it! Stephen King, Roadwork, second book in the back of books. Um, basically this one says, an immovable man refuses to surrender to the irresistible force of progress. So this follows a man named George who is living in the path of a highway. It's a highway that nobody really needs, they're just building it to spend the money that they've been allocated for the year. It's much like what happens here. If they don't spend it in that year, they don't get it for the next year. That's how it works. So they've been buying up all the houses in the street and he and his wife are the last ones standing, but he does not want to move. I think partly the reason he doesn't want to move from this house is that his son grew up there and his son died of a brain tumour uh, when he was like eight or nine or something like that and I think because of all the memories he doesn't want to leave there. Also it's in the path of his work which is a laundry and he's supposed to be finding a new location for it and they're all set to sign but he keeps delaying and delaying and delaying until it falls through. He's then fired, his wife leaves him but he still just carries on as if nothing is wrong. He knows it is because he buys guns and then he starts getting not violent to people but to things. For instance he blows up some of the diggers and stuff on the construction site so delays construction for a little bit and in the end he decides to go out with a bang and wires his house up with a load of explosives and starts shooting at police. It's really quite a sad story. Perhaps if his son hadn't died and had grown up he would have been happy to move and this wouldn't have happened. It just goes to show how grief takes you. I, I do think that if his son had been alive he would have wanted to move to keep his son happy and safe. Um, but yeah, it's quite a sad, sad story to be honest. Backman. Mm. But yeah, it was okay. Not my favourite, but it was okay. Two more. The last two Erin Johnsons in the Psychic Detective series. 
the Squawking Dead, uh, who in this one, the owner of a magical animal sanctuary is murdered on the day of their event. The event is that every 50 years the phoenix dies and is then reborn, so this is what they're going to be showcasing. However, the owner of the sanctuary, well, one of the two owners of the sanctuary, turns up dead in the phoenix cage with another woman lying dead beside her, who nobody knows who this woman is. Her husband at this time is her second husband. Her first husband just completely disappeared and nobody knows what happened to him. So what they go... We hit 30 minutes. So what they need to do is find out who killed the sanctuary owner and who the woman in the cage with her was. Once they find out that, it all starts to fall together. And they do even discover who killed her first husband. The one thing about this um, is important to the next part of the story is that a lot of the animals, not all of them, but a lot of the animals in the sanctuaries are shifters who Ludolf Catavol, because we found out that it's him that um, trapped Jolene without her magic, has been throwing potions at. He works on them until because he's trying to find a cure, cure for shiftness. He wants to stop shifters existing altogether and he is one. Um, so and they, and some of them have been there quite a while. So she finds it hard to talk to someone because they haven't spoken in their proper tongue for a long time. Uh, so it's a bit broken. But she does get to the bottom of it. She figures out that they're shifters and they've been put in the sanctuary uh, on behalf of Ludolf Catavol. And the last one in the series, and the last one for the month, is the Big Fang Theory. This is the conclusion. This is when we find out how Jolene was cursed. Um, well, we, we know how she was cursed, but th this is the end where they find cures for all the curses for all the shifters that have been plugged together. They are trying to, they're working on shifters right, so the truth is coming out about what happened, that the previous king uh, 50 years ago had called the shifters monsters because there was a war of monsters at that time so making the shifters as bad as the monsters people turned against the shifters even when the monsters were defeated even though they're still partly human um the current prince and his wife are prince harry and princess imogen are all for shifter rights and they are foremost in it and they help jolene get all the records from Ludolf's lair so they can work out how each uh, shifter was cursed and reverse it, including Jolene. But that's another story that uh, you have to read the book to find out what she decides because the, the cure might not work on her for a one specific reason. So in this book it's not so much about solving a crime, it's more about can they find out enough effort and get enough evidence to take down Ludolf Catavol, one of the shifted animals has said to Jolene that he will testify if they can turn him back. So yeah, absolutely fantastic series. I really enjoyed it. My mum thought it was a bit odd. Yeah, and it is. It is a bit different. For instance, they don't use hell. <clears throat> so they wouldn't say hell's bells. They say shell's bells and things like that. So some of the wording is a bit different, but it was interesting. Over 30 minutes of talking, it's no wonder I'm drinking so much water, I have to get some more into it. Anyway, those are all the books I read in April. I don't know. I just, when I get start reading, I just love to read and it's so easy just to sit there with the Kindle app on my phone. I do have Kindle. Jennifer's sitting on me. I can't colour. I'm, she's watching TV. There's one of two things I can do. I can watch videos on my phone with the headphones in, but then I can't hear what she's saying. Or I can read a book and that's what I've been doing so she doesn't always sit on me watching TV it's just when she wants to so yeah at the end of the month I hit 77 books or something I mean I'm on 80 now for this month I think yeah I'm on 80 that's pretty cool it'll start slowing down now it's warm in here <sighs> but the weather's changed so it's not so nice I've been raining all day um, I still haven't found my vlogging camera, like I said. I'm going to try and find that tomorrow so I can hopefully do a weekly vlog soon. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, yeah, if you've read any of these, let me know what you think. And if not, let me know if you fancy them. Um, I will have 
will say that the majority of the ebooks, if not all, were from, well, they were all, they're all Kindle Unlimited because I have Kindle Unlimited. So I borrow, borrow a book and then send it back when I finished it or when my mum's finished it if I don't want to read it because I can always get it another time. So, yeah, so now she's finished that, I can go and find something else. She's finished those, so yeah, I can go and get some more now and get rid of those two. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed this. I do have a book on the way, so whether or not that'll be read this month, I don't know. I'll see you in the next video, hoping to do a colouring chat soon, hoping to do a vlog soon. Take care, everybody, and I will see you <coughs> shortly. Too much talking, too long, I've got to stop reading so much.